Hello, my dear friends. Now, in this session, we will focus on what is meant by resolving power of an optical instrument. Now, before understanding the term resolving power, if there are two small point objects at very far distant from our eyes, suppose, like just take an example of stars. Just imagine there are two point objects or two objects which are very close to each other and those two objects are at infinite distance say from our eyes. So we will not be able to see those two objects separately. Instead of that we will find out that or we will able to see like there is only one object. We will not be able to separate them. In the same way if we take an example suppose like if you took any of the smallest of the particle, like take an example of ant. Now, by seeing naked eyes, we will not be able to see all the parts of the ants or simply just imagine that you have a gold foil and then you want to observe it. We will not be able to see their atoms, gold atoms, just by naked eyes. Because we don't have that much of ability to resolve such a small or either such objects which are at infinite distance or which are very, very small in sizes so for that purpose we use optical instrument for that purpose we use optical instruments now see we know that to observe the objects which are at a higher distance or longer distance we use a telescope and to check out the minor things we use a microscope along with these two we have another optical instruments with different types of advantages and the uses so now see what happens like when we use this telescope or microscope, we can easily see those two objects separately. That means what these optical instruments have that, that much of ability to separate them. Now why this happens or how this happens as we all know that if there is an optical instrument like this, suppose this is telescope or microscope, we know that when light passes through them, we will get a diffraction pattern here and no doubt that diffraction pattern will contain the central maxima or the brightest point with maximum intensity and then on both or either side will get alternate minima and maxima then secondary maxima. So this ability of these optical instruments are useful we can say they use this particular phenomenon. So here we can write the definition as the ability of an optical instrument to produce just separate diffraction patterns because see both objects will have different diffraction patterns and this optical instrument has that much of ability to split those diffraction patterns so here I will write to produce just separate diffraction patterns of two close objects this ability is called as a resolving power is called its resolving power or sometimes we use short form as RP of an optical instrument. So remember this is resolving power. Now we'll see what is Rayleigh's criteria for resolution in your university exam. Uh, most times they ask a question like what is a Rayleigh's criterion for a resolution. So it's simple when the question will be for two marks. So here we'll discuss what is a Rayleigh's criteria. Now see as we know that if you want to see two close objects distinctly or separately, we use an optical instrument. So, and we know, again we know that what is a resolving power also. So here, when we say that two objects are well or just resolved, yeah, right, just resolved. So the condition for two objects to be just resolved is what? That has been given by Rayleigh and the condition is what? See, as we know that there are two objects. So, we will get two diffraction patterns, two diffraction patterns. So, the criteria is what? The central maxima, this central maxima of first diffraction pattern has to coincide with the first minima of second diffraction pattern and vice versa we can see. So this is what this is the criteria for two objects to be just resolved that is the central maximum 
of first diffraction pattern has to match with the first minima of second diffraction pattern. So now see, now we will check it out. These three conditions for such a type of a resolution. The first one will say the objects well resolved. Now see, when we say that objects diffraction patterns of two objects. So here we'll have the horizontal line. Then see, here I'll draw the graph. The first one, see this will suppose the central maxima of first diffraction pattern. And then we have the secondary maxima and minima like this. And suppose here there is another central maxima for second diffraction pattern. These are the central maxima for both diffraction patterns. Suppose the wavelength for first one is lambda 1 and this is lambda 2. Now see here the central maxima of both the diffraction patterns are widely separated from each other. They are widely separated from each other. So here we can say that the, these two wavelengths are well resolved. So we will get two images. We can see those objects clearly. Now we will see the condition for just resolved. That is what here we discussed it before. So here I'll draw another graph. So this is for just resolved. Again, we'll draw one horizontal line over here. This one. And now we'll draw two diffraction patterns for two wavelengths. So here, see the first one. As I said, the principal maxima of first has to fall at first minima of second so here first of all i'll draw one see this one this one is the first pattern diffraction pattern like this okay on this side also now we'll draw for second so see as i said so this one is the principal maxima of first one say this wavelength is a lambda one this one is the minima of this first or this one is the principal maxima of first. So now we'll draw the diffraction pattern of second like this. So here there should be minima over here. So the pattern is like this one. The pattern will be like this one. So this is what see here. This maxima of lambda 2 falls at first minima of this blue line or lambda 1. Or in other words, here we can say this one, this point. See, this is the first minima of lambda 2 which falls at the central maxima of lambda 1. So when this condition is achieved, we say that the two wavelengths are just resolved. They are what? They are just resolved. And here, this one, see, if you observe, this is a perfect deep over here. This is, this is we call it as a deep. So this will be the resultant intensity. It will be what? The resultant intensity of both lights of wavelength lambda 1 and lambda 2. So this is what this is just a resolved condition and now we'll draw the third one that is images which are not resolved. So here I'll draw one graph or the line here for the first one. So this is a pattern for first one and then we'll draw for second one. Now see here this is principal maxima of first. So see this is lambda 1 suppose blue one now we'll draw for this one suppose this is we'll make this diagram a little bit bigger one that will be easy for us to understand the concept so here this is horizontal line again suppose this is central maxima of lambda wavelength in this there are secondary maxima and minimas on both the sides and now we'll draw for the second one suppose it is like this one so that means what here this is the resultant intensity so this is the resultant intensity first so here in this case the central maxima of both the patterns they are much nearer to each other or we can say they are quite mixed with each other so here in this case we can say that these objects are not resolved we will not be able to see the objects clearly but instead we will see the single object but here in this case in just a resolved case we will see both the objects clearly and separated from each other and here the distinguish will be little bit more one here in this case here that's why we said it objects are well resolved so these are what these are see in this case we can say how the wavelengths differ from each other in the diffraction pattern just remember one thing 
that this spectral lies obtained they can be resolved only up to the limit that is been given by a Rayleigh criterion so that's why a Rayleigh criterion is much important one we can resolve them only up to this value which will be given by a Rayleigh criterion so this is all about the resolving power of an optical instrument and then a Rayleigh criterion for resolution and as i said the criteria for just resolved objects just resolved is what the central maxima of first diffraction pattern must fall at first minima of second diffraction pattern and vice versa that is the criteria Rayleigh criteria for resolution so my dear friends i hope you understood resolving power and then the Rayleigh criteria kindly go through the concepts in next session we will discuss the resolving power of a grating that is the important question or that is the important topic and mostly there will be a question on that topic in your university examination thank you so much